Hello everyone, today I will give a presentation about my work, benchmarking with data envelope analysis and agency perspective. This paper has been accepted for publication in Omega, and I think it might be interesting to share this work to all of you. I'm Xiang Yang Tao, a doctor student in Central South University, and Qin Xian An is my supervisor, and Bei Bei Xiong is a lecturer in Hunan University. Our paper consists of six parts Introduction, Framework of Incentive Game, Yard State Competition Theory, Best Practice in Benchmarking with DEA, Normal Query Example, and uh, Conclusions. First, let's commence with the introduction part. The problem definition in this paper is that does benchmarking equals to target setting or benchmark selection? This is an interesting question and the previous literature seems to answer this question. Previous DEA-based benchmarking studies stress the importance of target setting and most of them focus on benchmark selection when they use benchmarking to help managers deal with operation issues. However, we stress that it may be not so easy to see that benchmarking equals to target setting or benchmark selection. To answer this question, we first review the definition of benchmarking first. Big job to point out benchmarking is traditionally thought of as a management tool that improves performance by identifying and applying best documented practice in the business world. That is, benchmarking is the sum of identifying best documented practice and applying best documented practice. Note that the component identifying best documented practice equals to the aforementioned target setting. From this definition of benchmarking, we may find the research gap in previous DEA-based benchmarking studies. Identifying best documented practice is far examined in literature, but how about applying best documented practice? This part, however, receives only limited attention in literature. Hence, how to apply best practice in benchmarking has been a solved issue to date, but of great importance to benchmarking literature. Our work originated from this research gap, and we integrate ancient theory into how to apply best documented practice in benchmarking. DMUs are denoted as engines and whether best documented practice will be realized depends on their own utilities. That is, our work provides an agency perspective on DEA-based benchmarking. In addition, there are several studies related to our work. For example, Cook considered principal performance incentive plans in DEA-based benchmarking, which considers the incentives in benchmarking process. However, we find that the incentive plan is not regressed from a standard incentive perspective because it lacks of interpretation of DMU's behaviors in benchmarking. Therefore, we propose a novel incentive game approach to study how to describe real incentive plans for DMUs. Our work had some findings. First, we find that DA best, best practice does not equal to best practice identified from agency cell. Precisely, DEA best, best pra practice is weakly inferior to best practice identified from agency theory. Second, we found that DEA models that satisfy strong monotonicity 
The objective function ensures best practice revelation with a strong enough equilibrium of the proposed incentive gain. Third, we also find that variations of closest target model can be used to find the optimal reinforcement schedule for the principle. In the last of the introduction part, we stress the contribution of our work. That is, first, we provide a novel agency perspective on previous DEA-based benchmarking literature. Second, we integrate agency theory and the yardstick competition theory in the proposed DEA incentive game. Third, we provide an optimal reinforcement schedule to ensure all DMU's best practice in benchmarking. And the last, we illustrate how non-radical DEA models contribute to the strong Nash equilibrium of the DEA incentive game. Next, we should introduce the framework of incentive game. To begin with, we should introduce the setting of the incentive game first. We consider n DMUs who are monitored by the central manager. The cost to each DMU is fixed, named CK, and the marginal price of output are defined as vector P. Then the research question is how to make all DMUs do their best practice, or in other words, how to make all DMUs produce the maximal output with a given fixed cost. To sum up, the incentive game unfolds as follows. First, the actual cost C is allocated to all DMUs and the price vector P is observed by both DMUs and the principal. Second, the principal proposed several reinforcement schedules to all DMUs. Third, the DMUs can reject or accept the proposed reinforcement schedule and their own utilities. Fourth, all DMUs select their individual output YK. Fifth, the aggregate output of YK is observed by the principal and the last the principal pays the compositions to all DMUs as the proposed reinforcement schedule. To further analyze the incentive game, we should introduce some foundations from agency theory. In agency theory, utility determines behavior. In the proposed incentive game, the utility of DMUK is the difference between the compositions from the principal and the disutility of effort. Production requires DMU's effort and after it's not free in agency theory. It hinders DMU's achieve their best practice. To describe the disutility of effort, we use the exposed target, the actual production, and the price vector to model it. Note that the exposed target is the DEA based benchmarks, and we will discuss it later. If the exposed target is no less than its actual production, the disutility of effort will be positive positive. Otherwise, we set it as zero. When the exposed target is no less than its actual production, the disutility of effort is the eta k times the overachievement of the actual production compared with the exposed target. The setting relates to the equilibrium of the incentive game, but also similar to the foundation of reinforced schedules we will introduce later. After formulating the utility of effort, the other component is DMUK's utility. The reinforcement schedule should be also 
discussed. We model the reinforcement schedule by considering both overachievement and underachievement of the actual production to the exposed target. If overachieves, the principal will pay all the additional profit and a fixed extra bonus to DMUK. However, if underachieves, DMUK will be punished and maybe get nothing from the principal. Based on the reimbursement schedule and the disutility of effort, we now can obtain the general model of the incentive game as follows. The objective function first, maximize the output produced by all DMUs and then minimize the reimbursement schedule to all DMUs. The first objective function is to achieve DMUs best practice and the second objective function minimize the cost of applying DMU's best practice. The first constraint IR shows that the utility when all DMU's achieve their best practice will no less than zero, which make all DMU's participation the incentive gain. The second, I see, identifying applying best practice is the Nash equi equilibrium of the incentive game. Next part, we will introduce the yardstick competition. Yardstick competition theory is proposed to determine exposed target with incentive property. To begin with, we need some assumptions. We assume the production function of DMU K FCK is all known to the principal, and we introduce a production function satisfy the minimal extrapolation norm as pi. That pi is the smallest function, which is no less than all production function FCK. Pi is used to describe the strongly efficient frontier with DA, and we will discuss it below. Then we can set the exposed target to DMUK with pi and the fixed cost CK. However, it may be problematic in the incentive game. This is because the setting of exposed target with pi lacks of incentive property. More precisely, if DMUK performs better than others, we will find that DMUK always achieve a constant utility regardless of its production level. That is, DMUK may refuse to realize best practice in the incentive game. To overcome this deficiency, we introduce that state competition theory. We define a modified production function pi. It excludes its own production function FCK with the minimal extrapolation norm and the exposed target with yardstick competition theory is formulated by the modified pi and the fixed cost CK. This setting of exposed target satisfies the incentive property and we will show it later. The next part is the best practice in benchmarking with DEA. First, the definition of PPS, DEA-based PPS on the VRS, and the DEA-based PPS with yardstick competition theory on the VRS is quite normal in DEA literature. Then come back to the DEA-based incentive game. The modified pi is defined as the strong efficient frontier that used in super efficiency evaluation. Proposition 1 and 2 reveals the relation 
of the exports target, the actual production, and the best practice production. These two propositions are consistent to the model of incentive game as we proposed before. Next, we discuss the Nash equilibrium of the incentive game. To begin with, we define weak monotonicity and strong monotonicity of the reinforcement schedule. The monotonicity reveals the relationship between the actual production and the reinforcement schedule. Weak monotonicity means any increase in output does not decrease the compensation for the DMU, while strong monotonicity says that any increase in output increases the compensation for the DMU. With the defined monotonicity, we have the Nash equilibrium of the incentive gain. Theorem 1 record our finding. If the reinforcement schedule satisfies strong monotonicity, then the best responses of all DMUs are to perform their best practice. And this response is a strong Nash equilibrium of the incentive gain. The first objective function of the incentive model applying best practice is realized by theory 1. The second objective function, minimizing the compensations paid to all DMUs, is the next question we will discuss. The optimal compensation depends on the optimality of uh, exposed target setting to minimize the reinforcement paid to DMUs based on the reinforcement schedule we defined before, it is natural to set the exposed target by the two formulas. The final task is to develop DEA formulations to the analysis above. Model 11 it's used to identify the relation between the exposed target and the actual production. Next, modern trial. It's used to determine the optimal reinforcement schedule when the exposed target is no less than the actual production. And the theorem 2 ensures best practice will be realized by all DMUs. Moreover, Model 19 presents the optimal reinforcement schedule when actual production is less than the exposed target. And the theorem 4 ensures best practice will be realized by all DMUs. Next part is the conclusion. The conclusions of previous work are quite intuitive. First, an agency perspective is first introduced to investigate DEA-based benchmarking. Second, monotonicity may be one well suited property in DEA incentive games. Third, the principal agent relationship can be further investigated in DEA based benchmarking. And the last, how to apply best practice in benchmarking should be further examined in the future. We here do not provide the normal example because of the limited time. If you are interested in our work or have some questions about our work, please contact me or Qinxian or Bei Beixiong by these three email accounts. Finally, thank you for your listening to uh, my presentation.